when you <sighs> think about the vastness of what the soul is, what our souls are, and then the yeah. oneness. And then we think, why did I sign up for this human existence? So in today's interview, you're going to listen to Jane Thompson give a more detailed version of the lessons that she learned during her near-death experience. We're going to discuss healing trauma and how to heal trauma. This is also what she does right now. She helps people to heal their trauma. So if you're interested in healing your trauma, I will link her details down below. We also talk about aligning with our soul's purpose and why we choose our souls to come here to earth. Why do we do that? Why do we volunteer to come to earth, to have this earth experience? Because it can be challenging, as you know. It's a very interesting discussion that I know you'll love. So let's listen in. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Very good, thank you. When I get emails, you know, after somebody has watched an interview or listened to an interview, it just, it can renew so much hope in them. And so that's why it's so worth telling it. You can get started. And I just want to say okay. a beautiful thing about your NDE and everybody's NDE is that we are all one and we are all connected and we're all a part of God. I mean, isn't it amazing that we've chosen to come here and chosen to forget everything just for this beautiful experience? I mean, I always think about it almost like we're so brave as souls to do such things. <laughs> when you think about the vastness of what the soul is, what our souls are, and then the yeah. oneness, and then we think, why did I sign up for this human existence on planet earth? And it's, it's to learn and it's to grow. It is mm -hmm. mind blowing to think we would volunteer for this sometimes though. You know, souls who sign up for the human experience are really brave souls. Dolores Cannon wrote that earth is one of the most challenging, if not the most challenging planet in the entire universe. That's what she found out in her book. I can sort of relate to that because it is a very challenging planet. <laughs> You know, like to hold the energy of good and bad and really transcend that and, and just to be non-judgmental and just to accept whatever it is, is the hardest thing. And that's really why we're here, isn't it? To just allow things to happen, which you said in your NDE as well. And I was listening to it. When we're in our bodies, this the saying that all is well, it doesn't make sense to us. Or we can maybe roll our eyes and think, oh, well, that's a nice concept, but it doesn't feel like all is well. And what I understood when I was in the light and what I understood and what I've come to understand more deeply since coming back into my body is that when we're here in our bodies, we don't have a complete picture of what's happening. Um, we don't see all of the pieces that are going on and when we are out of our bodies when we're in the light when we've transitioned out and we are stripped of ego and the limitations of our brain and the limitations of our body we have that 360 degree perspective and when you have that 360 degree perspective when you have the complete picture when you see the complete picture, saying that all is well makes perfect sense. And that continues to bring me a lot of peace as I'm back in my body. And as I was looking out that window while I was in the hospital, being told, basically being told I would probably be dead by the next day, that would normally be upsetting, but I was just looking out the window, getting that full picture again, that all is well, and everything is happening exactly as it is supposed to be, exactly as it should be. And what our brains often perceive as chaos actually has quite a bit of order to it. And that has, helped me to understand and integrate more that there's this flow to life and there is a lot of peace in embracing that there is a natural order to events 
there is a natural process and flow to life. And that makes it okay for us to let go sometimes. Because when I reflect back on my life prior to my near-death experience, or even when I have my still very human moments now, the times when I have tried to control or to force, it's never gone well. When I look back at my life and any time I've ever tried to force something, it has just never gone well. And it's because I get in the way of flow. And it's because I create these blocks rather than allowing the natural blessings of life to come my way and to slow down enough to notice when doors are opening for me or when doors are closing for me. And there's a quote that I love that always helps to keep me in that peaceful place of all as well and in the peaceful place of flow. And it's nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. And there's so much truth to that. If We can just get out of our own way long enough to allow that to be. I try, I still try. I don't just sit back and wait for everything to fall into my lap. I still try, but I don't force. And I know I've crossed that fine line over into forcing when I start to break a sweat. When I really start feeling like I'm putting some muscle into it, or I'm really using my brain really hard, I feel like I've cross the line over into forcing. And then that's when I try to dial back and I try to get out of my own way because the times when I have just slowed down and allowed that natural flow to take place, I've had amazing blessings come my way and not usually in the timing that I would like for them to come my way. I'd I'd like them to come a lot faster, but if I get in the way it takes even longer for those blessings to flow my way. And so letting go, slowing down, and just allowing life to happen. That has been a lesson from my NDE that continues to unfold. The beauty of that continues to blossom and unfold. I got that healing in the light where my traumas, my conditioning, my wounding, the scars on my soul, the holes in my soul, the hurt parts of my soul, they were being filled in and they were being healed. And I was being made whole again. I was being restored back to the true me, to the original me. And when I came back, into my body and the longer I was back in my body those holes started to return again I think this is just part of the human existence and part of why we're here to remind us that we're here to learn I still had the memory though of what it felt like to be in the light and to feel whole and to feel complete and to feel like my true self and I wanted that feeling back And I was willing to do whatever it would take to get that feeling back because that was and is the true me. That's my authentic, original self that I was made to be before trauma came into play, before conditioning came into play, before I fully formed my ego in order to survive this world. I had this huge motivation to get back to that wholeness of my original self. And I knew that as I rediscovered my true self, that my purpose, my ultimate purpose, the enormity of my purpose would unfold more and more over time. And so I was very motivated after my NDE to look at my trauma and to heal my trauma. And healing isn't always fun, but it's so worth it because 
you want to have those holes filled back in and you want to feel complete so you can live in the peace of being your true and authentic self. And so you can experience the abundance and the love and the joy of really being in alignment with your soul's purpose. So your trauma is, is your clue for knowing where your healing is and our trauma and our conditioning. It's what we learn from and our parents and our caregivers. I truly believe that they did the best they could with what they had. It's taken me a while to be able to say that and truly believe that and to, to heal any resentments that I might carry with me. Once you get there, there's a lot of peace in that too. And so while everyone did the best they could, and myself even now as a mother, I'm doing the best that I can for my daughter. And we're all really doing our best. And if we can all look at our traumas, look at our wounding, and do what we can to heal that, our holes will start to get filled back in and the wounds will be healed and we will start to feel complete here on earth so we can live out our true purpose. When I was in the light and those, when I was receiving that healing, when I was being replenished, when I was being made whole again, what I didn't realize at the time was I was being taught, I was being shown because it was so detailed what I was seeing. And it's almost the difference between if you do just do something for someone versus if you teach them how to do it, there's a, a very different approach to that. And I was being taught how to do it. That's why I saw it in such detail. And it took me a while. I had to work on my own wounding after I came back into my body. So it took a while and it took some practice um, to be able to help other people do that as well. And I feel tremendously grateful that I'm able to work with energy and that I was shown how to move energy and to identify wounding so I can help other people get to that wholeness here on earth. It was school for me during my near-death experience. It was truly school for me. And also they say that you get what you need from your NDE. That's why, you know, some people get a life review. Some people don't. Some people have unpleasant NDEs. I had a very pleasant NDE. And there are common threads in every near-death experience. They're also very unique for each person as well. And they say it's because you get what you need during your NDE. And what I needed was love. Um, you know, my background, I think I had been loved the best that I could be loved, but it was, it was lacking and I needed to feel the fullness of what love truly is. And that healed me a lot in the times when I'm going through a difficult period of healing or when I'm feeling alone or have just having a bad day, I'm able to remember that love, that that love really does exist. It's not just something that is a fairy tale or something that someone made up that it's true, it's real. And I think one of the biggest myths of, or misunderstandings of people that have had near death experiences is that we, we do receive that healing in the light and then we come back and everything is perfect and, and we're 100% healed. And that's not the truth. We do receive a healing in the light. And every time we think about our NDE, we receive a certain type of healing each time. We still have our traumas to heal when we come back because we are reintroduced to the physical world 
where we still have things that we need to work out. And so with an NDE, it's not a one healing and done. It's still a part of that process. So we are all going through this process together. And it's beautiful to listen to stories about people's near-death experiences because you experience a healing when you hear about the light or when you hear about another person's healing. I know when I'm talking about my near-death experience and I'm thinking about that light and feeling that light, it's coming through me. And that's part of what you feel. You may not even be hearing the words I'm saying. Sometimes you just want to experience that white light. And I remember when I first started talking about my near-death experience, um, right afterwards, I was laughed at and it wasn't well received. So I stayed quiet about it for a few years. And then I met this woman who was very interested in near-death experiences. And she told me that she wanted to hear about mine. And I was very shy about it because the times that I had talked about it, I was really ridiculed and, um, you know, brushed to the side. So I was very shy about talking about it, but she really encouraged me to do so. And I had only thought about it internally. I hadn't really practiced the words because it's very difficult to find the vocabulary that does the love justice, that does the experience justice. And so it takes some practice to talk about it in a way that makes sense. So I was also very shy to talk to her because I didn't feel like I had the right words. And But she encouraged me. She said, no, Jane, just tell me. I just want to hear what happened. And so I just talked. And when I was done talking, I said, oh, I really messed that up. I didn't say it right. I didn't really even paint a, a good enough picture for you. And she touched my hand and she said, no. She said, I saw it in your eyes. And that's when I knew you don't need the right words to talk about a near-death experience or really any spiritually transformative experience because people are there for the feeling. And yes, maybe they're there for the advice or the lessons learned, but they're there for the feeling. And when she said that to me, I saw it in her eyes what she saw in my eyes. And it was a beautiful exchange. And she is someone who has since passed. And I think of her often and I know where she is. And she's at that place that she was trying to feel that day when she and, when she and I were talking. So we all have a purpose in being here. Um, we all have a unique purpose. And I think we spend a lot of time, and sometimes this is our egos doing this, we spend a lot of time trying to figure out our purpose. And where you are in each moment, that is your purpose. And there's a lot of peace in knowing that. If you're having a bad day, or if you're having a good day, if you, you know, yelled at your kids that day, or if you had a great day with your kids that day, you are always in your soul's purpose because we are here to learn. We are not meant to be perfect every single day to fit the definition of being in your soul's purpose. We're all learning. We're all evolving. We're all progressing along our path. So where you are in each moment, you are in your soul's purpose. Now we are all ultimately heading toward the fullness of our soul's purpose. And the way we do that is, is we heal. We become more whole. We return to our true self. You can only do that a little bit each day. And you also have moments of chapters of big healing and then you take a little time to rest and to integrate that healing. It doesn't mean that you're not progressing along your path. 
And your soul and your intuition and your higher self is always there to guide you and to show you synchronicities and to open doors for you and to close doors that aren't meant for you. And just getting quiet enough and continuing to work on your healing so you can hear the wisdom of your intuition coming through. Because anytime you hear what sometimes you think could be intuition where it's saying you have to do this right now. This isn't fast enough. Anything that gives you an adrenaline rush, that's ego. That's not intuition. So if you feel you need to act quickly, or if you don't do it right now, something bad's going to happen, or you're going to go off track, that's not the truth. That's ego. Your soul and your intuition is not in a hurry. It will take the time to be peaceful with you, with guidance and with healing and with all of the things you need to know. And your soul doesn't mind repeating itself. It, your soul knows you. Your soul knows whether you're going to hear the message today or six months from now or six years from now. Your soul already knows. It's never going to rush you. All you need to do is just try to get quiet enough to listen. And when you feel that adrenaline rush, identify that as ego because your soul will never speak to you in that way to try to get action from you. We do all have a purpose in each day. We all have an ultimate purpose. And sometimes that purpose is just in being. You don't have to be doing, doing, doing all the time. Being is oftentimes all you need because it allows that flow. It keeps you from getting in the way all the time for the beauty that's trying to unfold in your life and the people's lives around you. And while we are here to learn, you know, school, school is earth. Earth is the is university. Earth is school, and it can often feel like the school of hard knocks. Um, it's not all serious. Every school has a playground. So go out and find your playground and have some fun and look for the joy. And I love to laugh, so I'm always looking for the humor and the people that make me laugh and the people that celebrate you, the people that lift you up, the people that make you feel good, and the people that you're making laugh, you're lifting them up and have some fun because it's not all meant to be serious. And we do need to lighten things up sometimes. And maybe sometimes you go out and you look for that literal playground and you get on the swing and you swing as high as you possibly can and feel the wind. That's a big part of the point in being here on earth too. It doesn't need to be serious all the time. And a great way to learn to have fun and to play is if you've ever watched a group of children on the playground, and they're trying to think of a game to play. They're inventing a game to play. They have so many different ideas and they are bursting with excitement to start the game. But then if you look at a group of adults that got put on that same playground to invent a game, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to think of everything that could go wrong in the game. And what will we do if that goes wrong? And what is the rule around this and what are what's your role and what's your role that's very serious and sometimes that's needed but we could learn a lot from those children that are getting together as a group to have fun and to play a game and to just do what feels good there's a lot of learning in that for us so as we are here to learn and to heal our trauma and to return back to our our original self a big part of that is noticing our limiting beliefs and noticing the running scripts that are happening in our head that 
really probably it's not even us talking. It could have been a parent. It could have been the words of a teacher. It's coming from somewhere else and noticing when fear comes up and identifying this is fear. This is a script that's not mine. This is a limiting belief that's not mine. And trying to replace that with love. Because in healing, love is what will bring you the biggest and most profound healing, um, the most long lasting healing. Love is the best healer. So when you find yourself going to these places that aren't love, and that you know aren't beneficial for you, always try to return back to that place of love. And you don't have to have been in the white light to have a glimpse of love. You can see it in a child. You can see it in a pet. You can see it in a flower. I had a hummingbird that flew up to my window and just hung out there for a few minutes the other day. That was a moment of experiencing love to me. And so there's love all around you. So as much as you can notice that, that will help your healing and that will help you find that peace on earth that we all are so desperately seeking. And as you're wondering about your soul's purpose, notice what lights you up. Notice what your spark is. Notice what is exciting to you. Notice what brings you joy. Think about the things that you loved as a child, because those are all clues about our ultimate purpose. And so noticing, taking note, and it may not be something that you use right now, but just knowing that now or at some point in your life that brought you joy. Also look for what inspires you because what we hear a lot is when we are judging other people, there are clues to where our healing is needed. The same is true for inspiration. When you are inspired by another person or inspired by something, it's because that's you too. They are lighting something up in you. They are showing you a part of yourself that means so much to you that it inspires you. And there's something to take from that too, because that points to where we're headed and where the fullness of you is and the fullness of your meaning and purpose. And so watch for the areas that you're inspired. Watch for the movies that you watch or the things that you hear about where you tear up, where you cry a little bit. That's an indicator of where you may be doing your own healing because a year later you may watch the same movie and it doesn't even register to you of why you cried. It's because you healed that part of you. So just noticing all of these things around you and not everything is a sign. Sometimes in the spiritual community, we can think everything is a sign. And then we start to try to find meaning in everything. Sometimes that red car that drove down the street, it's, it's just because a red car drove down the street. So don't make yourself crazy with trying to look for meaning in everything. When you do feel inspired, notice what's inspiring you and how that might play into where your joy is and what your spark may be.